haven't tasted rice until you taste Auntie Flo's Kilombero rice. It brings out the flavor and taste in every meal. It's priced right as well. $4 for 2 kgs, $10 for 5 kgs and $100 for 50 kgs. Available at Eastgate Market Shopping Center in Harare and Fidelity Life Center in Bulawayo. Or simply WhatsApp us on the numbers on screen now. Auntie Flo's Kilombero rice. Delicious. Tasty, mouth-watering. From as little as $20, your Christmas and New Year's could be filled with entertainment. We provide free-to-air decoders, smart TVs with built-in satellite receivers, tech support for all our products second to none. Find us in Harare, Mutare and Mashingo. For more information, WhatsApp us on the numbers appearing on screen now. Kesson Electronics. Grab yours today. My name is DJ Ola Seven Owen. We Kwama Donda, the Chief A Masha on your number one podcast show in the land, the Ola Seven Podcast Show. The moment you've been waiting for. Hey guys, how was your weekend? By the way, it's a beautiful Monday. Uh, the second second week of um, second week of January 2024. How is your 2024 so far? And my ten days are paid. I remember from that day, but my ten days are so stressed. I'm going to ten days. My resolutions, my 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 resolutions in new year. But anyways, this is the Genius Kids Show where I host, uh, you know, these young ones uh, from zero to A level. So uh, tonight I'm hosting these guys from uh, one from Northwest, right? Am I correct? Yeah. Yeah. Northwest, yes. and the other one is from Eagles Vale. So I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Okay. So I'll start by you. Um, hello everyone. I'm Tafara Chuoza, an upper, an upper six student from Igoso. Igosvel. Yes. Wonderful. And you? Um, I'm Kayo, currently studying Form 3 and enrolling at Northwest High School. Form 3? Yeah. So how is it going to balance Form 3 and Form 6? That's how we do it in the That's base. Oh, intellect is yes. oh yeah. uh, I like that. I like that. I, that's why I asked the questions, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so to, tonight we're going to talk about, uh, you know, um, the ad- issues or to do with artificial uh, intelligence, right? Yeah. So um, this house believes that, uh, you know, the artificial intelligence has more harms, you know, than benefits to this society. So you are representing what the non-affirmative side, yeah, and you are representing the affirmative, affirmative side. Affirmative side. Yes. So this is like a, it's a debate, guys. It's a debate. So um, I'll start with you, my brother, um, Kyle. Okay, what's your take on this? So as we know, artificial intelligence is when a human conscience is assimilated. Um, into machines or working computer system. That's mm-hmm. artificial intelligence. Right. So we want to know how artificial intelligence, right, is um, impacting mm-hmm. the world at large. Maybe before we go, uh, we get there. Yeah. Let's start by, the, uh, I mean, uh, differentiating it, different between artificial intelligence and general technology. So general technology is just a working machine. Mm-hmm. It's just binary zero one zero one zero one. Mm-hmm. It can only task if you program it to put this in the box. That's the only thing it does. But then now with AI, it's meant to resemble human, human activities in a certain way or a certain standard. Mm-hmm. So they are more of like human, like robots or machines that we can sort of relate to as humans mm-hmm. since they carry our characteristics. Okay. That's AI. Mm. Yeah. So my take on AI, we want to see how AI is helping the world at large mm-hmm. and how it's also impacting Zimbabwe. Okay. So right now in Zimbabwe, we had... Um, not recent, I think last year, we had Cyclone Freddy, you reckon, and yeah. we also had Cyclone Ida last year, but one, I'm not sure. Yeah. So, with AI, we were able to actually foresee that there was a coming climate, mm-hmm. and people were evacuated, and there was enough time for people to evacuate and seek shelter. Mm-hmm. So you can see how life, how, how many lives AI has saved through this. Mm-hmm. If, we th- if we didn't have AI, we couldn't have been able to foresee it. That's one of the biggest impact AI has on today. It's saving lives. Mm-hmm. Not only that, you know, as a nation, we are large, mm-hmm. about 6 and 15 million, yeah. right? We have concerns like food security. Mm-hmm. We have concerns like security at large. We need to know how much food we need to proceed for mm-hmm. the next day. Yeah. And we are human beings. We can't literally do that. It's above us. Mm-hmm. We're tired. We're people of flesh. So and with AI now, we are able to sort of create a trend whereby we see, okay, our population 
he has increased by 1 million. We now need a certain percentage of food production. We need to increase our food production by 40% so that as a nation, we do not conclude to hunger. Mm -hmm. That's AI. Mm -hmm. So it's running our country, as you can see. Mm -hmm. So if this is AI, if these are the fruits that AI are bearing in Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. what if AI, right, we give AI the platform to, to, to we give AI the platform to whereby we say we now are implementing it in private corporations and private uh, and into the lives of Zimbabweans. Like we have issues whereby we have people doing undesirable jobs. Mm -hmm. I mean, like we all know in Zimbabwe that no one wants to work at the TU. <laughs> it's one of the most looked down upon jobs. No one wants to work as a maid. Those are un the undesirable jobs that humanity has to do. But if you can replace a maid by a working AI, a robot that just assimilates the maid, that is meant to clean the house, to be able to, to, to tell itself that the house is dirty. Mm -hmm. Let me clean the house. Mm -hmm. That way, there is no more need for anyone to leave their children back home to go to another person's house and act as a caregiver. We leave that to AI. With this, there is no more need for people to go in and ask for resumes if they can always have an automated system within. So now we don't have people working under pressure day in, day out because we all know that these workers... Are it, it leads to, you know, job losses? Yeah, you know, with job losses, we can look at it like you're losing a job, mm -hmm. but then we should look at the aspect. By losing that job, is it doing more harm than good? By you losing your job to work at um, chicken as a waiter, we leave that to a robot, right? So there's no more a job for you there. You no more have to do with depression, stress, anxiety, and looking under pressure. So because now we have AI, it closes that door and opens another door. Which door now? Well, so that's the only job that I have. Yeah. I have applied for it. So now, if these if these blue collar jobs are closed, so now as a nation, we're now saying we are more. We are revolving, we are evoluting into AI. Mm -hmm. These robots need someone to, they need a person to sort of monitor them. We, we as a nation, we want to build these robots. We want but to give them an updated software. If, if there's someone to monitor the robot, yeah. it's not going to be everyone. It's not going to be everyone. So let's say five people are doing this job. Yes. And there is now one person just monitoring five robots or whatever the robot doing the stuff. So mm -hmm. five people losing the job and one person gets the job. Monitoring the robots. Oh, that's the sad reality of it. But we should also look if these five human individuals lose their job, is mm -hmm. it for the better or for the good? So now, if it's now an AI taking care of the job, we no more have instances whereby we're saying that the customer service here is bad mm -hmm. or the customer service here is slow because AI has no flaws for mistakes. So if we replace human people with and replace them with AI, it leads to a more flawless industry within. It goes as a private corporation, right? Mm -hmm. But then for the five people again, we have lost their jobs, mm -hmm. right? We can always have substitute jobs. We can always take them in because we have got, you know, recently at a program, a six week course that is being hosted by AI Zim, right? In, uh, I'm not sure, in Arari, right? So these people have lost their jobs. We can educate them and say, I know you've been working at KFC, but then you can better your life. Mm -hmm. If you educate them on how to operate and even to make their own type of AI, I think we can impact Zimbabwe at a more bigger level. Why stay at KFC? If you can go and be innovative, if you can go and work in the trend that the world is evolving in, because we have to agree. So if, uh, let's say, yeah, Pegasin is employing 5 million people. Yes. Or let's say 1 million of the 6 million, or we said 60 million, 60 million right? Yeah. We have in Zimbabwe. Yes. And let's say 1 million are working for Pegasin. Then you introduce that robot you know, introducing artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. Now, what, what, what is going to happen to those, you know, one million people? So, on those one million people, I must say, it's obviously, it's you, lose, number, you lose your job. Yeah, it, it's, it's very true. Number. Unemployment is one of the so benefits, but then it doesn't necessarily have to be unemployment. Mm -hmm. If these other millions of people have lost their jobs, right, we can always take them, right? We can always say, we know you've lost your job. The government knows. But then you can just leave them with unemployment. Mm. So why not educate them, right? On on why not educate them so that they get the jobs that are burning at that time? We can educate them to be technicians. It will be relevant if we have AI. We, there will be a high demand of technicians by then. We can even sort of teach them on how to be software engineers. This is AI, right? It's not like Bakerzin is going to stay with the same module of AI. Mm. It's going to it, it, it want to update it, it want to better it and to make it even flawless. So we need a lot of software engineers. Therefore, there will be a lot of like IT jobs that are on demand, that are on fire, that need a lot of people to Okay, do I'll so. come back to you. Let me just uh, hear from uh, <coughs> my sister here. Okay, so I want to firstly reply what he has recently said, right? So he talked about people being educated, right? 
the people that would have lost their jobs. Now they are being educated and then they are going into the IT world. But then at the end of the day, we need to consider that we are talking about Zimbabwe. Mm-hmm. Zimbabwe, which is a developing country, which is not even developed yet. So my first question is, who exactly will be paying for these people's education? Because if you look at it, the people who work with in are not uneducated people. Yes. Most of them actually have their degrees at home, but then they have nowhere to go. How many people are software engineers in Zimbabwe? No, are we saying uh, if, if, if someone is employed at a bigger zine, the he, he or she has not, nowhere to go? For, sorry, I beg your pardon. You say the, they, they are working there because they've got nowhere to go. They have nowhere to go, exactly. I mean, but what if it's her choice? To be at Baker's Inn. There are people with a choice, but then I'm saying some people don't have a choice. Okay. Exactly. And he was talking about people being educated after they have been retrenched or they've lost their jobs at Chicken Inn. So those are the people that I'm talking about. Those are the people I'm talking about at hand. That those people, who is going to educate those people? Mm-hmm so that they acquire the knowledge and then they venture into software engineering. And then when they're now the engineers, when they're now the technicians, where are they going to be working? Mm -hmm. Because the main point here is that people are going to be losing their jobs because of of artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about the Zimbabwean society. We want what's best for society. Yes, IT is there, but people are losing their jobs. Mm -hmm. That's an inevitable fact, exactly. So even if you're saying... There's going to be better service at Chicken Inn if there are robots there. What about the people that work there? Mm-hmm. That's the number one thing that we need to consider. Because at the end of the day, we're not going to be happy being at Chicken Inn, being served by a robot when there are now people, they, when there's now an increased number of people on the street. Mm-hmm. Because some people work there and they have nowhere to be. Yep. Of course, some do, mm-hmm. of course. So we're saying when we are advocating for artificial intelligence, mm-hmm. we will be neglecting the greater numbers of people mm-hmm. that are being employed yeah. manually. Mm, I, I think I, I agree with you. Mm-hmm. I don't know uh, if Kyle agrees too, but... Uh, you know, on the part of AI, on the losing of jobs, it's something that is very inept. It can truly happen. And we are very well aware that it will happen. But then, as we know that it's, it's going to happen, we want the government, right, to say we know that our citizens, most of them, are, might lose their jobs, especially the ones who are working in the blue-collar jobs. Mm-hmm. So what are we going to do as a government? We are going to have to offer free education for these people who have lost their so that so that if you lose your job, you don't need to pay for tuition again, because it's not your fault. So the government, you have to create free courses so that these people can take which are more related to the burning jobs of that time, which will most likely be AI. So in that way, you necessarily don't really have to lose your job and just stay stagnant as if saving someone in chicken was the only thing you know how to do. You can instill your brain with more technical things like AI and software engineering. But again, if you are then taught how to make these AIs out to be technicians, right? we are also now going to look at employment. We are, are you going to be employed? Well, definitely, because in Zimbabwe, we've got a large number of corporations. We are sort of like a nation of enterprises. And when you say that AI is going to be embedded within Zimbabwe, it means that our daily life, which means a lot of private corporations are going to embed AI within their system. Hmm. So you're obviously going to be employed at a larger scale. Look, um, I understand that you're still in high school. Yeah. There are people who are into commercials, arts, sciences. Mm -hmm. And now... It, 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 it sounds like everyone will be doing sciences. Oh, yeah. Um, it what does mean, sound that like area? that. In a way, so those will be the burning jobs. Mm-hmm. So they are going to be burning jobs, the jobs they demand, but then they are just jobs that AI cannot replace. We cannot have a lawyer who is in AI. Mm-hmm. We cannot have politicians, p- politics being carried out by AI. Mm-hmm. We cannot have AI. But is it not better though to have a... <laughs> <laughs> It's not, uh, we, we can't really, if, a robot in parliament. You know, the thing about parliament is we need to relate to what you're saying so mm-hmm. that we've watched you in. How can you re- relate to a robot? Mm-hmm. It doesn't have emotions. It doesn't go through the same pains we go through. Yeah. So it's going to be bad for AI. But in the case that, yes, we're going to have burning jobs, which will be AI, right? And then we we'll also have the jobs that cannot be replaced by AI. Mm-hmm. We cannot have AI but musicians. There, but there are few, right? Yeah, they, they are. In a way, but there's nothing we can do because we want a better world. Yeah, so, are we talk about uh, you know how does artificial intelligence negatively affect learning in schools? Mm-hmm. Let me start by Tafara. 
Okay. So I think that from what I have sort of like studied, artificial intelligence has a great negative impact, especially for schools which are developed mm -hmm. more than others. For example, there are schools that allow their students to bring tablets, laptops, iPads, phones to school, mm -hmm. and they have computers at school as well. You know, many of the students are teenagers. Mm -hmm. They are still growing up. There's a lot going on. Mm -hmm. We can't expect someone who is in Form 1 to be responsible enough to be carrying their phone all day without playing games or without me seizing mm -hmm. it. So artificial intelligence, yes, it has come about with advantages, but then it's school, in schools, we see that many of the students are even failing mm -hmm. because of the artificial intelligence, because most of their terms is now dedicated to taking nice pictures at school, mm -hmm. seeing what's trending in schools, you know, playing with their phones in schools and focusing on social media because everyone wants to be trending on social media. So artificial intelligence is being, is being misused by students, especially in schools. And we can't sort of like advocate for artificial intelligence or say students know what they're doing because they're talking about children. They are obviously going to misuse artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. And this is something that we see every day. I'm a junior member of parliament. I have seen it happen. Mm -hmm. I've had issues Artificial intelligence is being misused mm -hmm. in most parts of the schools. Mm -hmm. And it's not always that you have your teachers around to be monitoring you. Sometimes you're alone. And, you know, when students are alone, they begin to even watch inappropriate stuff on mm -hmm. their phone mm -hmm. because there's no adult to monitor them. They're just going to continue doing it. They're, and then that's going to be a very destructive thing to them. Yeah. And it's going to affect their education at large. So even though it has their benefit, if, even though artificial intelligence helps, you know, students to take their notes on their phone and it, it being more portable and, you know, all that, artificial intelligence has, like, a negative impact, which is greater than the positive it has, especially to high school students mm -hmm. in schools in Zimbabwe. What's your take on that one, uh, Kyle? Um, so with artificial intelligence in schools, yes, those cases are quite rompous. We hear them all the time. But then when you say that let's implement artificial intelligence within the educational sector, we don't necessarily mean that let every child come with their own cell phone and laptop. Mm -hmm. No, that's the, not the only way we can implement AI within our educational mm -hmm. systems. What so are the other, ways? The other another alternative we can do is as a school, you can always buy one of the latest interactive boards. We have the Clever Touch right now, which is being utilized by a lot of private schools, right? Mm -hmm. I'll get to the public schools later. Yeah. So you can buy that type of board. It can go on the internet and do the same things any computer and phone would do. Mm -hmm. So now that way, you know, you don't have to go. It, it works the same way with having a laptop, you know, because if you have a laptop, what a laptop is saving is you don't have to buy textbooks. Yeah. You don't have to buy books. So if you have that board in the class, no one needs to buy any laptop or phone mm -hmm. because the school has bought a board. And if you want to use a book, that board can display the book. And because it's big, everyone can see the book. That's how we can implement AI within our education system. If you do not run the board, we have another alternative. As a school, if you're privileged enough, right, you can always buy laptops as a school, which you insert with um, a monitoring softwares, whereby we say if you have the school laptop, you can accept one, you can you can access one in two sites. This is what my school does currently, and it works efficient. We have never had a, a case of someone viewing pornography. Yeah. So I think every school should take this stance. And then for the government schools, that might not be that much privileged. Mm -hmm. I we have seen. You know, the government, we have always seen, it's like a cycle. The government um, buys these public schools' laptops mm -hmm. and they donate schools with yeah. these laptops. Yeah. So we are now saying, please, the government, when you now donate the laptops to the school, mm -hmm. make sure you also give the school a programming software. Mm -hmm. Where now the school now has the power to see what their children and students are actually accessing on the internet. Mm -hmm. That's another way we can implement AI within our educational system. Wow, that's powerful. And, uh, you know, do you think uh, artificial intelligence can evolve you know, to a stage where they can terminate our humanity. And uh, why do you think so? Uh, Tafara? Sorry, I beg your pardon. I said, do you think artificial intelligence can evolve to a stage where they can terminate our humanity? Well, currently, with what's going on and what's taking place, I don't think it can evolve to that extent anytime soon. Mm -hmm. But obviously, eventually, it will. Yes. And you? 
Um, yes, AI is very good. It's very great. And most likely to reach that level. So this is why I think we should, this is why governments should then sort of like stay, um, set restrictions to these at, um, to this artificial intelligence making companies. So uh, what I'm saying by that is AI is going to keep growing to the point where it's going to be smarter than everyone and it's going to control a lot of things within the working globe. Mm-hmm. So when we cre- when to these corporations that are making AI, the court can always issue them certain rules and regulation whereby we say for every artificial intelligence you have made, you need to insert maybe a self-destruct mm-hmm. um, program yeah. in it. So that in the case that it now wants to turn on us, we can always press the button and mm-hmm. boom, it's dead. So let AI evolve to be a very great AI, but let us as humans mm. have that one squeeze which you can just say, if you misbehave, we turn you off. Mm. Yeah, so the government and the law should insert these type of guidelines and parameters. Yeah. We cannot let private corporations go. We can let, we can let them go wild with these type mm-hmm. of things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, so the other thing we should do. And uh, I want to ask the non-affirmative these questions, right? That's you. That's you. That's, that's, I mean, that's Kyle. Yeah. Kyle. So how is artificial intelligence good for society, both at school and home? So how is um, artificial intelligence good for society, both at school yeah. and at home? Mm. So the only way we can see how good it is for the society, at school and at home, is only if we compare it with a society that never had AI. Mm. So if we compare these two, we can then see where AI has improved. Um, in the society back then, even at home, if you had any chronic illness like AIDS, the people would, mm-hmm. <laughs> it would not take one minute, they would rush, yeah. you slept with a monkey, mm-hmm. or you are cursed, the ancestors don't like you at home. Mm. Imagine. Yeah. And because it's at home, obviously people at schools are going to do the same. Yeah. But then when AI came, not only did it rebuke us, it enabled us humans being to be able to study. So now we know what causes AIDS mm. and where AIDS comes from. Not only do we know, we know how to sustain AIDS and how to comprehend AIDS, mm. right? And imagine how many lives have been, sa- have been saved. The fact that we, are, we, we, we can save lives with AI mm-hmm. and the fact that we have debunked some of society's stereotypes mm. on people who are oh, hopeless, yeah. pertaining to cancer too, mm-hmm. right? So this is how AI has sort of like improved societies and schools. Not only that, in the old society, you know, in the old society, my parents always used to tell me this, especially in schools. You'd have books like Ventures book, maybe, let's just say Ventures book mm-hmm. 23, and then there'd be a new other company again making a book, right? So these companies would have made their books in different years. And because it's a book, its information is non volatile You can change it, and it can be updated, even yeah. though it's going to be outdated. Mm-hmm. So now in schools, you do not have a problem whereby maybe as a school, you're reading outdated books, mm-hmm. and Zimsek happens to give you a test, yeah. which and Zimsek has been using the more um, like updated books. And now as a school, you're now failing. But then with AI, AI is volatile. We can, we as humans, we learn all the time. We don't have to stick with one certain type of information. Mm-hmm. So now because of AI, we are progressing and everyone accesses the same information. No one is the information which has been written from 1958 and expects to use it in 2023. But which society has improved uh, due to the introduction of AI? Um, the society that has really improved mm-hmm. with the introduction of AI, to be quite frank with you, it's definitely... Um, Yes, we have actually really improved. Even schools have really improved with AI. Schools have really improved. Using chat, uh, chat GPT? Yeah. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I don't really support that. Chat you see, same with chat yeah, GPT, yeah. you see chat GPT, we are saying chat GPT is like you have an assignment, you go home, and when you go home, you use chat GPT. Your work is done. You read nothing, you did nothing. That was what was happening earlier this year. But, but did not, you know... It's not a good thing. That's why I don't support It's not a good thing. Yeah. But... Did you know, after ChatGBT came into place, we now have what you call the ChatGBT, like it's called the Analog 2.0, right? So what this one does is every teacher in the university now has this program. So when they're now marking your works, which you've ended in over using software or laptops, mm-hmm. they can use that app to sort of like analyze and see if your work has been used, you have been using ChatGPT. So for every problem that AI produces, it always has a solution. The same way it has computers, but then those computers have viruses, it also has got antiviruses. <laughs> so it's a win-win situation, <laughs> you see. But now what happens when the uh, lecturer finds out that you've been using information from ChatGPT? Even if the can. most um, stance that they can take there is you have misused AI. That uh-huh. was never the goal of AI. Uh-huh. Therefore, you should just repeat your course because you can't have doctors cheating with ChatGPT and then uh-huh. doctors in the next four years. So you, just... you repeat the whole in, um, semester. And you, you can't blame AI. We should blame you for cheating. Uh-huh. Yes, it goes against all moralities. Okay. So we can blame it. We blame you. <laughs> 
All right. So assuming, you know, uh, artificial intelligence can evolve to the level of men where they uh, can terminate humanity, what do you think, you know, can be done to mitigate the evolution? I think I said this before when we said that it's, oh, there is a very big possibility that AI is definitely going to evolve to the point where it's going to be more strong and more powerful than mm. humanity. So this is when, why, this is, when I was saying that, you know, the governments and the law itself should literally introduce laws whereby they have to give these um, IT companies sort of like a due restriction or sort of guidelines where they say that if you're making AI, at least have a soft distract button or at least give us access to software that can sort of like hinder this type of AI or at least give us as a government and as the people closure on like something which is very tangible. In the case that if we say that AI is now going to go against us. We can say, oh, we have this, mm -hmm. and we can stop this. And again, when you say that AI is going to control a lot of stuff, we should know that when it comes to controlling even a nation or a people at large, you need military to use. You can control people without fighting. You can control people without weapons. <laughs> so are we saying that AI, right, a robot mm -hmm. that has been created, take this book, insert it in the box. You cover the box. Mm -hmm. It goes. It tells itself that it's the only, it has been programmed to work that way, right? So we should know that AI is not a collective unit. It's not like one robot. If we say we see this, then this is the whole of AI. Yeah. It's sort of like a branch. Mm -hmm. yeah, we can, a car can be AI. If it drives itself, it's yeah. considered AI. Um, a washing machine can be AI. If it knows how to wash the clothes alone without any minute, it's now AI. Yeah. So AI, there are different compartments. So are you saying that these compartments are going to come together and form a single unity? And when they form a single unity, they're going to dominate <laughs> us. And even if they form a single unity, do this AI have power, the same power you have militarily, yes. like, at, like we have nuclear weapons? Do you really think we're we are going to fear such? No. We have the access to nuclear weapons. Mm. We can fight them if we want, yeah. right? We can. But then that's not the road we want. We just want a road, an easier road, whereby we say we have something against them. Uh, your take on that one, uh, Tafara? Um, well, there's a lot to say. I'm even overwhelmed. Um, when you're talking about AI, right, evolving mm -hmm. to that extent, um, we see that in the world that we're living in today, we have tasks that are done for us, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And then we're looking at a society whereby we're saying AI has evolved to the extent that you just wake up and then you're sitting because everything is being done for you. And yeah. Exactly. And we're looking at our society, right? We're saying, does that benefit our society? Mm -hmm. So we're saying in Africa, in Zimbabwe, we have this thing whereby we're saying no matter how rich you are, no matter how good your family is, the family that you come from, you just have to do chores. If we're giving AI that much advantage or that much leeway over our lives, then that means AI is now taking control over us. Mm -hmm. So we're saying in that case, it's damaging society because you're growing up without knowing how to do any chore because you wake up and everything is done for you. Mm. We're saying AI is even giving you tea or breakfast in bed. In other words, we're saying AI is actually creating a weaker um, generation. Yes. And if you're looking at society, which is the main center of focus today, we want society to develop here, but then we also want society to be developed and equipped with mm -hmm. skills and information. Mm -hmm. Because what happens when you are in a situation or a scenario whereby you don't have access to AI? Yeah. Let's Let's take a look at Zimbabwe, right? You live in the city, you have access to all the AI that you have. Then you go to the rural areas. Mm -hmm. Now you have to do everything on your own. We all have different backgrounds and whatnot, but then we are saying, in scenarios like that, when you have no access to AI, mm -hmm. you also need to be able to fend for yourself. Yeah. So we are saying AI is removing that level of knowledge or skill or acquiring knowledge from us. So if we continue to better AI without bettering our knowledge, mm -hmm. that's going to be a very big disadvantage to us. Okay. Yes. Uh, Kyle, <sighs> I'm sure... You know, I don't necessarily like to thank her. She really straightened my point. She fully admitted that AI is going to... <laughs> it's going to take over to the point where we don't have to do anything. Imagine, uh -huh. it's going to be really working tirelessly and humanity is just... Humanity's life is going to be easier. Mm. But, you know, I fully have to agree with you. At some point, our generation or society will be very weak by then. Mm -hmm. But it's not really practical because it's not like um, we go to school. What do we go to school to learn for? Do we learn about AI all the time? We learn about um, how skills. We even have got subject. Like, what do you call uh, them? Because now AI is now the thing. Yeah, AI so is... So now it's, it means maybe the curriculum may have to change as well. 
So it, you know, yeah, curriculum might change. I yeah. feel I agree. But one thing that you never change is we have subjects like history. Mm-hmm. We have subjects like um RAE, religious education. Yeah. We even have got extracurricular studies. Mm-hmm. We have got sports. We have got clubs, debate, mm-hmm. all that. We can make everything about AI. Yeah. AI is simply just going to be in the educational system, but it's not going to be all about it. It's just there to help us learn other things, not to help us learn about it. Mm. It's just that you keep us more. So if you go to school and you're telling me that we, you know you have boarding schools, right? In the in boarding schools, it's not like they can't afford to especially in private schools, it's not like can, they can't afford to have they can't afford to have like um people who come and clean up to you and stuff. They can, but then because it's the school, it's also there to teach you societal values and values as a human being, craftsmanship. We have got subjects like that in, in, in schools. Um um you know that subject called you know it's called Toastmasters, mm-hmm. courtesy. Yeah. How to make your, how to clean yourself, how to look after the environment around you, how to always be in an environment that is clean. Mm. That's the educational system. We even have got sports. And let's say in the case that you have met a lion in the jungle and you happen to do athletics, you can run. We leave that onto the educational system. It's clearly, <laughs> it's not like we're just going to be using AI at home. Uh, Tavara is like, uh, maybe, what, what is this guy talking about? <laughs> That's exactly what I'm saying. Exactly. You know, because you said we use AI in schools, right? Can I please just go back to the chat GPT point? Yeah. I had mm-hmm. forgotten about it. Yeah. He talked about the lecturers having a software, mm-hmm. an updated software that can check if a person used chat GPT. Yeah. But we're saying there are also schools that don't have that technology yes. yet. We yeah. also need to consider them, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Because they're, and they're also teachers and lecturers that are just lazy. They're just like, okay, they wrote and then they leave it they like that. 23 or more assignments. <laughs> exactly. Yes. And then they don't even check. So what happens now when a person is graduating and then they're just thinking chat GPT like it did everything for them. Mm. Exactly. And also going to the issue of schools teaching people how to do things for themselves. Yeah. That's exactly what I said. Mm. That as society, if we allow cha- so if you allow artificial intelligence to do everything for us, mm-hmm. then what are we there for? Yes, yes. Are we My saying is, well, yeah. are we saying in future it's going to be artificial intelligence without humans? Mm-hmm. We are saying yes, artificial intelligence might evolve, but then as humans we need to fend for themselves. That's exactly what I said. Mm-hmm. So we can't have a society whereby we are having things done for us. Mm-hmm. Plus, let us not forget, let us not generalize everything globally. Let's look at Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe is different from developed countries. Yeah. Zimbabwe has a background which is traditional. Mm-hmm. We also need to consider all that. So we can be equating ourselves to developed countries yes. or Western countries. Mm-hmm. We have to go back down to Zimbabwe so that we match what we are saying and being practical at the same time. Kahad Mashona like exactly. Kaka Simba Bonzo. Yeah. Kano Shanda. Exactly. Eh, Okay, okay, yes. Okay. We, we we have traditions and values. <laughs> There's no way to debate about that. It's yeah. really true. It's, it's 100% true. But then uh-huh. what now I debate is one, as much as we love calling ourselves that Mashonas, mm-hmm. if I go out there and I stand in the road, I don't see any Hat Mashona. Mm-hmm. We know that Hat Mashonas, they used to walk long distances. But yeah. look at you, you're using cars. Mm-hmm. Is that not AI? Is that not technology? No, it's not even AI. It's just technology, yeah. right? Exactly. You're now using yeah. cars. Look at you, you're even holding a phone. Is that Hat Mashona style? Is, no, it, it does not. that is going does it's it technology. It's technology, yeah, technology which means as much as we have culture traditions norms we are living in the 21st century mm-hmm. and there's globalization happening yeah I understand. economies need to grow mm-hmm. so either you like it or not you have to go you know you have to go full screen within, within this globalization because we can say that we as Zimbabwe we are not going to better our future and we're not going to better our daily lives we're not going to have um, phones we're not going to have cars we're not going to have TVs because mm. we want to maintain our cultural norms mm. because we want to be hard Mashona but you move with the world if the world is going there everyone goes there globalization is taking place and you move with globalization mm-hmm. back then there was no globalization just the society you know, it reminds me of uh, uh, a topic you know that once we once did in in in, in college uh, <laughs> globalize it says globalization a necessary evil question mark and at the points we like okay somewhere against it against globalization yeah it's happening but somewhere against it because look cultural you know cultural erosion mm-hmm. i mean for the lack of a better word because of this globalization, people are now like, okay, let's drop, 
you know what belongs to us and let's to, to, is it inherit or adopt 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 yeah, yeah. so number one it's very true yes people and have now this artificial intelligence thing zagwe has just zima foot our culture and we're now starting over again to adapt to this new system, system. not to be frank or anything but you said culture yeah so you're saying that we as Zimbabweans have culture mm-hmm. you know the thing about Zimbabweans is we love our culture yeah, but we love our culture but within loving our own culture it's a bit delusional because mm-hmm. honestly we don't have a culture if you are talking that culture you're talking about if you could tell me what is the Shona traditional attire does it have a name do you know it uh, nembe um <laughs> No, I I know the Shashiko. name. Shashiko. I don't know. Not, not Shashiko, really. <laughs> Do you know what Shashiko is? Mm. <laughs> Evidence. No couch. No, but uh, I, I I forgot the name, man. Yeah, but yeah, we do have. At some point, we have a certain level of culture, but mm-hmm. our culture is not something we can compare to cultures like the Zulu people or the mm-hmm. Ntosa people. Those yeah. people literally have got days where the men have to go up in the mountains so that they can be... That's your culture. Yeah. For us Zimbabweans, what we touch is morality. Mm-hmm. We sort of have morality. We believe that if you greet, if you see an odd person, greet them. And then you're saying, that's culture. No, that's not culture. That's morality. <laughs> that's that's what it's supposed... That, that's what's supposed... To, even though, it's, yes, it's derived from our culture, mm-hmm. but mostly it's um a morality. Real culture is when you are now saying if a girl is rich 15, let us take her to the river and insert her one to see if she's too a virgin. Mm. Like we used to do. That's culture. Yeah. Saying that. Should, if, we, should we continue doing that? Should no, we continue? Or that's even abuse. Say, that's abuse. That's oh, she's abuse. saying abuse. That's abuse. You see, so you've <laughs> ran away from your culture in the name of abuse, but then you then stand in front of me and say, we want to practice our culture. Which culture? Mm. Which culture? We don't practice our culture at all. I mean, like we literally have got white weddings. We have got... We have white weddings and lobola weddings, right? Mm-hmm. But again, in our culture, we have polygam, right? There are couples who choose to have that traditional wedding mm-hmm. and say, I'm not going to have the white wedding. White wedding, Because yeah. I'm hard to my shot, because this is our tradition. Yeah. And then after having this tradition, the funny thing, after having this traditional religion, saying that I conform to our traditions, those men then go and cheat. And then the wife is like, ah, you cheated on me. It's cheating bad in our culture. Mm-hmm. Polygam. No, yeah. cheating and polygamy is two different things. Yes. Cheating. So... If a man really did conform to our couch, mm. you would have no reason to cheat. You'd simply come with the side chick and say, this is my new wife and I want to marry her. You are now the boss and she's thinking, I cheated. Mm. You are done. The so wife no more has to be, f- the wife no more has to be fear saying you cheated on me because she also conforms to our couch. She knows this is what our culture does. Mm. But look at you. You claim to you do your culture but then you go the opposite way. Because of this uh, new Western culture? Because of globalization. And the thing about Zimbabweans is globalization hit us bad. We lost a large chunk of our culture, a large mm. chunk of it. Mm. The only scripts you have of our culture and right we are now, going to l- almost, we are likely to lose almost everything because yes. of AI. We took, you know, the thing about because Zimbabwe. Of AI. Because of AI. Yes, you're going to lose it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. <laughs> you're going to lose it more. Yeah. You have lost most of it, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Right? You know, the thing is, when technology came before AI, mm-hmm. We started by saying technology is bad, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So, but then technology came. The Shona lost a huge chunk of their. Mm-hmm. We focused more on education. Right yeah. now, if you go anywhere and say I'm Zimbabwean, people have a stereotype of saying you are very intelligent because mm-hmm. we're well known for our education. So, we put our education at the forefront and in the process mm-hmm. forgot our culture. Yeah. But AI is not the only um, entity to blame for degradation of culture. Mm-hmm. What about the early missionary Christians? They, they killed our culture pretty much like at large layers of Missionary schools. Yeah, the missionary uh, Christianity is a religion. It killed mm. us. We, 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 they, they, they put a sentiment in our brains of saying that if I practice these traditions, they are seen as evil. evil if yeah. I go to my, let's say, father's grave and perform Kurova Gova, it's known as necromancy, and people be like, Jesus, will rebuke you, go to you. Well, now that's a sentiment. That's a mentality we now have in us. <laughs> so we lost our culture through that. But then AI is not the, it's not the one who, 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 who made us lose it more. Mm-hmm. It's us I, idolizing education in front. It's us also trying to thrive to be a bigger economy a bigger nation in, in the process we list our culture. Mm-hmm. It's also us adapting to Christianity and also forgetting where we really came from. Because as ah, much, yeah. I don't know, these points. <clears throat> well, I just thought of something right now. Yeah. There's a program that I saw on ZBC TV, mm-hmm. which is being run by Amai Oxilium Nangagwa. Yeah. Just check Jira by Amai. Oh, yes. Right, that one. Mm-hmm. They are trying to bring back culture. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we're saying in Zimbabwe, we actually noticed a problem at hand that, okay, 
because of all the aspects in our lives our we are slowly losing our culture mm-hmm. yeah and then now what can we do about it we can try to fix it yeah. okay so there are now programs that are there to help people know about their culture mm-hmm. because if you take someone who is five years old right now there are a lot of things that they do not know about themselves mm-hmm. even about their culture yeah. right so i think there are programs that are helping us to make sure that we restore our culture of course artificial it- intelligence is not the only thing that has eroded our culture mm-hmm. but we are saying if we are going to be putting it on a pie chart yeah. or on a set graph mm-hmm. we see that it has the greater amount mm. of percentage which has caused to erosion of culture because if you see artificial intelligence it has exposed us to to musicians from all over the world mm-hmm. it has exposed us to movies to series to artificial intelligence to machinery yes. to everything from all over mm-hmm. but then if you want to for example take a look at other countries let me just take india for an example mm-hmm. as an example they are not really that developed but then they also have artificial intelligence mm-hmm. but whenever you are wherever you are you will see that this is an indian because they uphold their culture mm-hmm. and we cannot blame artificial intelligence but in that there. case but yes. then it's there you mm-hmm. see so we can't really blame artificial intelligence as the main reason in zimbabwe for us not having our culture, culture yeah. exactly yeah. because there are a lot of things that caused it yeah so as zimbabweans we can't say that it's because we it's because of artificial intelligence that we lost all our culture mm-hmm. You understand? Yeah, I get it. Exactly. So as a nation, we have to actually, we have actually noticed that there's a problem mm-hmm. of cultural dilution. Mm. And now we are doing things to curb it, right? And then that's a way of us distorting our culture. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Because we actually have countries out there that have artificial intelligence, which is even more programmed than the one that we have in Zimbabwe. Mm-hmm. But still, they uphold their culture. Wow. Sakaluti culture, like India. Wani kaucha yao. Wani kaucha yao. Wanto itezira bobo. Wani itezira. But artificial intelligence is there. It's there. So I see affect their culture. It's not. It's really maybe to tell you go but see la kune mabasa nezo nezo but not their culture. Yeah but I think I, I agree. So I think as you know you know affect of Zimbabwe. So are you now agreeing with the with, with Kyle? No I'm not agreeing with you. Uh-huh. I'm saying a different <laughs> point altogether. <laughs> Because <laughs> I, I feel like you're now agreeing with him. No, I'm not agreeing with him. I think she's him. trying to say is we already lost our culture because of a lot of factors. Yeah. So, so now why are we adding AI to the wound? Uh, I think it's not what you're trying to say. So let's not add AI anymore. Let's just it's, stop it's, it's occupying the greater part of it. AI is becoming our lives right now. But then before AI, there were a lot of things that caused cultural erosion. Mm. So if we pinpoint to AI, AI. Right, right now, that would be actually wrong okay. of us. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. So before we get into the next topic, um, what would be your conclusion to this uh, topic? I'll start na 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 Kaya. Well, for me, my conclusion is, as Zimbabwe, we want to be a great nation. We want our lives to be easier. We have been in the shackles of poverty for a long time now. Mm-hmm. And I think we are very tired. We can't remain... This Zimbabwe, we are, we are always looking for a better vision. This is why our president has been saying 2030 vision. Mm-hmm. We can all tell that we hunger for change. Mm-hmm. We hunger for a better life. We hunger for an easier life. Mm-hmm. So the only way we can truly achieve that is through AI. Look at the other countries evolving. They are growing within AI. Look at their military strength mm-hmm. growing. Mm-hmm. And we also want security as Zimbabweans. We cannot like have missiles from 1986 so America has got these good missiles. So we must move with the world. Mm-hmm. And in that road of moving, let us be developed right yeah. let us be a developed people and a developed nation and developed people so that in the world in the case that we now want to interact with the other global powers with other international countries mm-hmm. we are on the forefront or we are on the same level yeah. let us not really prioritize our culture yes we have lost our culture i really feel bad for that but then let us not prioritize it <laughs> we are not in 1986 mbani under died mm-hmm. right so at least we cannot mend what you've done mm-hmm. you cannot change the past but you said you can change the future yeah. so let's try for a better future using ai that's the only solution we have that's the only way we can redeem ourselves <laughs> okay there you get it from my brother here um kyle let's talk to you, uh his last Safara. statement was we need to have a better future using ai but then we can also have a better future when we work hard mm. yes you can we can always have alternatives mm-hmm. and i'm saying i'm taking this from 
children's perspective yeah. whereby they are saying even though we have ai in our lives it's doing more harm than benefits to us mm-hmm. and this is very evident we hear news about students every day suffering because of ai in mm-hmm. different aspects in the social in the educational in the in every aspect mm-hmm. because even if you take a look at it um many schools even mission government schools have introduced the issue of laptops or cell phones yeah. in schools right mm-hmm. but then for most of the schools that um write and say examinations the pass rate is actually decreasing mm-hmm. and then we ask ourselves why when there's artificial intelligence, intelligence yeah. yeah so if we now take de- take a deeper look into the stories mm-hmm. if you now take a deeper thinking if you now look into the stories more mm-hmm. we will ask ourselves is i is ai really improving our lives mm-hmm. is ai really improving the lives of children because at home everyone is on their cell phone mm-hmm. no one is talking to the other yeah. even if we are saying our culture has already been eroded but then as families we also need to have time for mm-hmm. each other mm-hmm. are we still having that same time because if even if we are removing culture from the picture yeah as families we need to have time for each other mm-hmm. but then today you will see a 6 year old on their cell phone yeah, on their tablet everyone is on their everyone phone, is on yeah, their phone. Yeah. no one is talking to anyone mm-hmm. and then that's when we see division in these families yes. it has a lot of disadvantages compared to advantages mm-hmm. and i think that we can't really go away with it because that's it's slowly becoming our way of life yeah. but then as zimbabwe we need to understand that ai is something that we are taking from abroad mm-hmm. yeah so as zimbabweans i really think that we need to firstly understand mm-hmm. the advantages that ai has to us mm-hmm. and then we change the system so that it can suit us mm-hmm. because if we don't it's going to continue having more of the disadvantages than advantages to mm-hmm. us because of course everything has its own advantages and disadvantages but then currently looking at it in zimbabwe we sort of like don't have enough resources mm-hmm. to tune the it the ai to suit our perspective mm-hmm. so if we then do that now then ai can start to be able to suit us and then be more positive to us mm-hmm. but then if we don't do that it will continue to harm us mm. ah very very powerful uh, that's um uh, tafara uh, uh, tafara um, from Igosvel uh, Chuonza and also my brother Kyle uh, Masango from Northwest High School. Okay. So manje manje tsara pia mu next topic boys right to brother zakati wande team boys was akasiana siana. And the next topic we are going to uh, touch on is um you know religious institutions are to blame for the de- uh, decadence in society's morality so i want to talk about that one timo zvakanya tsomira say tambo nyanya dze morality ambo but kwambichana na 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 kayo pana apa tsaura kupinda mazviri deep okay stay tuned ah isi semadzimai takaona kuti tite zano rekuti tipetsereke mupenyu nemhuridzedu ndakaona kuti tikaita zvekukandira na mari izvi tinoita chimwe chinhu saka takatanga kukandira na mari chikandira na mari yai asi tozoti manje tati fambe fambe ndoba takatanga kuchibvunza mari yatichitarisa kuti ko mari haufane mari yai mari dziadzisina kuoneka kwadzo dzatachitofu kuti ah mari yawanda asi imwe yacho kana yaibiwa zvaifamba sei kusvika takazoana iri mwe bank loans nbs Dora kazoti ko zvamunoita izvi madiku yakuvhura account muno tinokuchengetera imari tikati ho ndokutora nemadzimai aya ndokubva taenda tonogunovhura account yedimo takaita magarden edu tikari mazvakasiyana siyana zviri zvema veggies takari mazvechokwadi ye zvine zvatina kana namo ne veggie hatina namo kana ichimwe chinhu nezvinhu zvatakaizoita akomana takaona kuti kanga ichitamba nenguva NBS iri pamberi ndo katakatanga kuisa mari yes no mari yedu ndo kwairi iko ko iri kuchengeteka zvakanaka and mufaro tinao zvisingamboita tinotenda NBS ramba ichidaro kumadzimai chevabatsira for credit unions mikando maround open a group savings account and be sure to create value for your money for more information contact the numbers appearing on screen now NBS bank 
build and go beyond. Okay, guys, welcome back to the All Our Seven podcast show, The Genius Kids. And uh, tonight I'm hosting these beautiful kids uh, from different schools. So I have uh, Tafara uh, Takura Karikega and Kyle Wandina um, Yachakari Paraba Kyle Masango. So now we're about to talk about, uh, you know, the issue and the goods that teacher Bata and Israel Paraba, you know, uh, religious institutions um, are to blame for the decadence or, I mean, in society's morality. So let's uh, talk about that. Let me just start by greeting you, Takura. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. <laughs> Great. And uh, welcome back, uh, my brother, Kyle. Thank you. Okay, so you're representing the affirmative? Yes, affirmative. Affirmative side. Okay. okay. So let me ask you, uh, since you are representing the affirmative, uh, affirmative side, uh, what is religion? That's the first question. And I always, you know, loved, love asking this question because people struggle to, you know, really explain to me or define what religion is. So I want you to tell me what is religion. Then what moral values should religion instill, you know, in members of the society? Okay. All right. So when you're talking about religion, right, uh, the word religion is subjective mm-hmm. in terms of uh, is it regionally based or is it globally based? So due to the fact that we have different religions within the, the whole globe at large, mm-hmm. um, I would define as a li- religion as a system, right, which in this case as a spiritual supernatural being mm-hmm. who operates right from um, from above right in this term uh, above means a, per- a place where these uh, people cannot go it's beyond human proportion mm-hmm. yeah okay that's religion that's religion okay so now what moral you know moral values uh, should religions instill you know in members of the society right uh, when we are talking about morality we are talking about the the things that are expected of people and that are not expected of people, mm-hmm. more like ethical values. So we're here to discuss about love, unity, honesty, respect for each other, accountability, and whatnot. So generally, we have to talk about the way people coordinate mm-hmm. and how they keep in touch with each other under religion. Yeah, which morals, I mean, in society uh, have decayed, and why should we blame religion for this you know, decadence? Yeah, to say the least, uh, we can say a lot about uh, morals, especially in this time, mm. that uh, morals are being degraded. For example, we can talk about love. When we specify that there is no communal love anymore, mm-hmm. on based on the on, on the line of argument, then we can talk about unity, being people being uh, in different groups due to different reasons. Then we can talk about respect. Mm. Go, you know, going up and every we know it's a base, it's a it's, it's a common thing that we have to have respect, right? Mm-hmm. So. Respect now is now not being catered the way it's supposed to be catered. Mm-hmm. So we are saying that uh, it's, it's, it's part of moral values and it's being uh, degraded. Mm-hmm. We can also talk about uh, honesty. We can also talk about the aspect of respecting the environment we are living mm-hmm. in. We can talk about culture, tradition. It's, when you talk about morality, basically you're talking about how you carry yourself around mm. with other people. Yeah, That's why our main ground here is the society. Mm-hmm. And uh, what do you think, you know, religious um, institutions should do to restore uh, morality in societies? Um, mainly my, my, my line of argument is to say, uh, is to mainly blame the religious institutions for the cause. <laughs> so, um, but if you had to ask in that way, I think there are some things that the religious uh, practitioners, religious system, religious leaders that are not upholding, in which my case are going to be my line of argument mm-hmm. to say that they are not doing this or they did that, which is not supposed to be that way. Uh-huh. So, not to preempt, you can hear it sometime. <laughs> okay, back to you, my brother. What's the take on what he was saying? Um, so, before I start my own case, I, I, I loved the, 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 the sentence when you say that there are certain figures within religions that mm-hmm. are causing this unfortunate um, decay of molarity. Yeah. So I just wanted to specify that there's a difference between a big figure within a religion mm-hmm. and the religion within itself. Yeah. We cannot say the pastor is Christianity and Christianity is the pastor. Mm-hmm. No, the pastor is the pastor, mm-hmm. but Christianity is Christianity, mm-hmm. yeah. right? It's a whole collectiveness of people. Oh, the so pastor is the pastor. The, the pastor is the pastor. Okay. One human being with his own messed up mentality, mm-hmm. messed up, good, bad, they are just like us. Yeah. But he, he is not the religion. Mm-hmm. So getting into my case... I really wanted to touch on moral decadence because we really didn't touch it. 
exactly that. So moral decadence is simply a deviation from an expected patterns of behavior that conform to um, the standards of society, the standards of insanity, mm-hmm. and the standards of the community yeah. at large. That's moral decadence. Mm-hmm. And now for us to then say we have moral decadence within our community, within Zimbabwe, mm-hmm. it means that you're looking at a certain standard of morality that has practiced and comparing it to the morality of the youth to then saying, so where are the youth falling short and where is this moral decadence taking place, mm. right? And that standards, the people who happen to state that standards are our parents, the millenniums and the generations before them. Yeah. So then you ask, you then ask yourself, if the millenniums and the generations before them within the Zimbabwean community could uphold these rules of morality and morality within itself, mm-hmm. what of the youth? This is, where the, this is when we now come in and say, let us compare the environment within, within which our parents' generation, the generation before them, grew up in, and the environment within the youth is now growing up in. Yeah. Right now, I think you were also born within that time, right? Yeah. You can testify and tell me that back then, the community was rambas, it was one unit. Mm. I always hear stories of everybody. My parents would say that back then, you were everyone's child. The neighbor was your mother, the father yeah. was your... Yeah. Everyone was your mother and father. Mm. Therefore, if you were caught acting out of line, mm. everyone had the right and the responsibility mm. to rebuke you. Exactly. That was the community. They were there for these children. Mm. They knew the sole essence of raising a child well and raising them together. Mm. But now let's compare it to the environment today, with the community today. Yes. What is the current community? What is the community we are living in currently? Mm-hmm. Right now, we have this mindset of, they eat my child. Yeah. You cannot eat a child who is not yours. Mm-hmm. The parents have that mentality. You I'm the only one who can eat him, but no one else can. Yeah. You get. Mm-hmm. So if right now, as I'm sitting here and I want to smoke, mm-hmm. I go out and smoke. Mm-hmm. Who is there to rebuke me? No. And who will rebuke me? No. no one. So the community has failed drastically, especially on morality. Mm-hmm. Because we, like our motion says society. Mm-hmm. It's not a society without a community. Right. And if the community has fallen, then society is dead mm-hmm. within itself. So how can we blame the church? I like the part where you say it's not a society where there's no community. community. Where is the community within the society? Mm. Right. Uh, before that point slips my mind, uh, I heard him highlighting, firstly, the, the point about the pastors. The pastor differentiating. He was differentiating saying the pastors and the yeah, congregants. The pastor is the pastor. Mm-hmm. That's what he said. Exactly. Well, if you ask me, that's a misrepresentation uh, of facts mm-hmm. in terms of religion. Because the pastor is there to lead the church. Mm-hmm. So he's yeah. neglecting that fact. Are we saying that uh, when the pastor is now... He's a, he's a human being. He's a human being, right? Yeah, who also messes up like everyone else. He messes up, yeah. but he's, the way he's messing up is now being of effect to the masses that are following him. We're not saying people don't mess up. They do mess up. Mm-hmm. But now, we cannot separate the pastor who's leading the church from the church because the, the, the reason why he's being called the pastor is because he's in within the church. The church, yeah. Yeah, we take uh, like uh, certain individuals, church leaders. We cannot come to, here to say that uh, if, uh, if Prophet, Prophet Makandiwa does this wrong, then we say that the, 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 the masses ignore. If he starts to, to do something which is hideous mm-hmm. and people follow him, you know people follow these religious uh, leaders yeah. religiously, Religious, yeah. exactly. So if, the, if he starts behaving that way, his masses are going to follow that way. <laughs> then he comes back to my point to say, we cannot distinguish between a society and a community. Mm-hmm. I heard he was com- uh, co- commenting that back in the days we used to have uh, people who would look out on our behavior mm-hmm. to say, this is what's supposed to be done. Mm-hmm. This is supposed to be done. Yeah. But now, if we trace back, my parameters here is the affirmative who's supposed to set parameters. Yeah. It's Zimbabwe. Mm-hmm. Let's look at Zimbabwe. Back then, I-, I-, I want to assume he's talking about Christianity, which was not there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and then he said there were people who were doing that. Mm-hmm. But those people belong to that religion. Now the difference is that this religion is indigenous. It's all from from somewhere. It's a religion already. Yeah. Whether it's African indigenous religion, you know, the ATR. M- yeah, modern day IR or Christianity or Islam. But the moment that Christianity came here and joined, trying to put its own installations into this country, yeah. it, it, it there was a clash. Right. Mm-hmm. Whether it's, it's it's ATR which was already doing its uh, its, its normal ways. The fact that another religion is coming, we are still blaming religion. Mm-hmm. Whether it's Christianity, whether it's what, because we are saying another religion is interfering. Mm-hmm. Oh, in, in that case, if he talks, if he talks about uh, millennium ages and uh, the parents and what, 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 yeah. what, I think that adds is a, another reason for for moral decrease. Mm. Because we're saying back then people used to do this in this religion. Then comes this religion, people are no longer doing that. Then you blame the community. It's not about the community; it's about the influence. And you said we cannot distinguish. The community from the society. We cannot. 
Okay, what's your take on that? And maybe let's start by defining a community. Yes. And also defining a society. A community, right? It's a group of people who live together in an orderly sort of area. That's yeah. a community. It's so a we community. can just say Zimbabwe is a community. Mm-hmm. But now society, society is when, have you ever had instances when someone was like, if you kill someone, society will not accept you. Mm-hmm. Society, these are sort of now like a personification of the standards of morality which the community at, mm. uh, upholds. That's now a society. That where we are the standards society, coming from? We shall not conclude to this. Saying where, are the, where are the standards coming from? Well, the standards comes from the community within itself. Like, like I said, morality is subjective, which means right now, if I have a wife, we go on an island. Mm-hmm. We start our own children yes. right on this island. Mm-hmm. As we live together, we encompass difficulties. So when you encompass these difficulties, then tell, we then tell each other, like, gentlemen, we are having a problem whereby someone is stealing. We can't have that in our society. We can't have that within our community. Mm-hmm. So let us make it a norm that no one steals. Not that's morality. Now that's the standards. The community, the people is set to say, now everyone has to follow this mm-hmm. so that we live peacefully. Mm-hmm. So the community is just a group of people. We're just together. But then society are now the standards of morality. They set within themselves, saying that I am a society. By saying I am, it means that I conform to the standards that the community has set. Mm. The community was no value, it's just a group of people. A school can be a community. But, but, society. but the society is not the standards which the schools have set, the people have set. That's the difference. And you, is it clear now for you? No, yeah. it's not clear. You don't agree? But, yeah, because when you, when you get back to the motion, right? Yeah. The motion says this house believes that religious institutions are to blame. Now, when you're putting a community, I think that's now a whole another body of, uh, of debate here. Yeah. Because we are supposed to issue out. He's supposed to issue out how he's playing his part in not doing that. Yeah. And I'm supposed to issue out how religion is doing that. Yeah. So when you're talking about a community, I have no point to rebuke that because it's out of my question. Exactly. It's not, it's not my question. <laughs> I, I'm not answering to community. I'm answering to religion. Okay. Facts have to be about religion. <laughs> so you see now, with this motion, is, <laughs> it's interesting. Um, he comes and says, uh, so morality is failing. Mm-hmm. But then my problem is, it's not really defining where morality has failed. What mm. is is it because we now have a lot of rape cases, people abusing drugs? Good question. Yeah. Let me get there. So like I said earlier, um, morality, right? Ethical ethical values, mm. do's and don'ts, love, uh, honesty, accountability, what not. Mm-hmm. Let me start um, because I have questions. My arguments are more like questions to him. Yeah. Yeah. To make the story short. Uh we now have churches which are demanding uh to say uh, religious institutions to say for one to be an accountable member of this church, they have to have these do's and don'ts. Mm-hmm. Of which one of those do's and don'ts are being... Are you referring to the doctrine? Doctrine, ideologies. Okay, yeah. And if you don't follow that certain doctrine, mm. there's, uh, there, there, there's fanaticism. Mm-hmm. Right. So when we have a doctrine such as of uh, vivid examples, tithe, mm-hmm. we have churches that have specific tithe, 300, 500, <laughs> why not? And partners. Divisions. Already. <laughs> That's decrease in morality. Yeah. So I will say, if I ask you here that you are you are, you are entirely solely want you want to join my 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 religious institution, yeah. and then I tell you that uh, it's supposed to be five hundred, mm-hmm. you cannot afford five. You cannot afford five hundred. Maybe a day you can afford maybe twenty after hard work, mm-hmm. right? So what is the next move that you're going to do to get into my church when you know you know I have a choice but to pay? Right, but you, you do not. The, for the sake of recognition, you do. You have to do something. Mm-hmm. You know, finance. So, what are you going to do? Then comes the social, uh, the the part of social immorality. Mm-hmm. When we say, facts be told, people are kuromba kunzo. Yeah. For this reason, mm-hmm. religion, mm-hmm. because I have to meet Ningi standards. Yeah. Which is totally immoral. Yeah. So. Whatever you say, whatever the, the whatever your line of argument is, mm-hmm. when you are doing with religion, you should know that religion it strains the people. Mm-hmm. Uh, a, a, a very intelligent man once told me, uh, "I'm a religious studies uh, yeah. student, by the way." Mm-hmm. You were saying, uh, "When you come here into the, the the classroom, you have to leave your faith at the door mm-hmm. because you're going to re- to discuss real facts, exactly logical facts. <laughs> this has nothing to do with you going <laughs> down on your, your knees." Faith, and that that hit hard here. Mm-hmm. But to tell the truth, there are certain, some certain actions that we are seeing that are happening, that are evolving. What not? Religion is participating in everything. Mm-hmm. But the question is, is it positive and negative? And I stand to say it's negative. It's negative. It's negative. Like this issue about Kuromba, 
this issue about Kurumba. Let me specify. This is a this, this these are just logical reasons. Uh-huh. You want to have money to do certain things, but the church can help you. Yeah. Then you have to you, like desperate times for desperate mm-hmm. measures. Then also, um, you see that the church is not working for you. Maybe the prophet, this prophet that said, if I do this for you, you're going to be having bags and bags of exactly. money, exactly. right? Bags and bags of com- of money take ages to come. Mm-hmm. Then what? Mm-hmm. So uh, is that not religion in the first place for giving someone assurance that it's going to happen? Instead of telling you, what? They are not doing that uh-huh. because religion is supposed to give faith, right? Yes. But it's not giving faith. It's giving them assurance that you sit here, you need down your knees, and then money comes. Yeah, yeah. That's a lie. Mm. Mm. Guys. So, <sighs> yeah, yeah, go ahead. So that's morality for him. Mm-hmm. So he concludes that because religion is no more teaching us about faith and um, saying that there's a God to this and want. Mm-hmm. So religion is now drifting to more of the economic side, but it's now saying to in order to join the church, you need to pay a certain amount of money so that you join. Yeah. Or Definitely. as a church, wait, you said as a church. Does the church give you money or the church promises you money? Right. We have prophecies and prophets, right? Or like prophecies, but they'd be like, ah, I see you yeah. with money. Then okay, exactly. I get you. So now, you say that, yes, for sure the church has skewed morality mm-hmm. because it's now in diving within man, yes. giving a people a sense of greed. Mm-hmm. So now people are going in for Kuromba. Mm-hmm. But I like to correct him honestly. Greed is a human natural thing, even if I don't go to church. I'm Which religion greedy. is supposed to end? Wait, what? If it does its specific objections, it has to end. So, <laughs> yes, it has to end. So, my point of saying is, greediness <laughs> is a human no emotion. Facts. Greediness uh, was already carried out, uh, right? So, people are generally greedy. We can't help that religion can't help that. It's, <laughs> it's in us. So, re- greediness was already practiced a long time ago. Mm-hmm. People went to Kuromba. But then you should understand that within that society, it was something that was accepted. Mm-hmm. It was part of the religion. It was nothing bad. Did you kill anyone within Kuromba? No, you just went and you did. Plus, it's spirituality. We must understand that we don't have hundred percent um um proof that there is a God. Right on that it point. It would not be shocking to hear that you might go to church day in and day out, just realize that there is no God. But then back to my case of morality. <laughs> then be because, like, okay, I was wasting my yeah, time for the past But then years. back to my case of morality. Mm. I'm focusing on the morality right now. Yeah. What do you see around? You're seeing drugs. Our youth are indulging in drugs. Mm-hmm. You're seeing rape. You're seeing all the, You know, these days we no more have a sense of authority. We can't authority, respect yeah. our parents anymore. Mm-hmm. We, are, we are literally spoiled. So, is the church to blame? Okay. So, in a society... Let me finish, <laughs> my friend. So, in this society, right? Society has got stages. So, if the parents who are there to teach you morality, what is good and what is bad, then you yeah. go to school. Then after you go to school, you go to university. Then you're inserted within society. Now mm-hmm. you're a working citizen within a world. Mm-hmm. So, let's check. Is this how the structure of society is literally working? Are the parents doing their job? The parents, the first segment, the people are supposed to teach you good and bad. Mm-hmm. You've been damaged. We know more have patterns within this generation. I, I, I want to ask this from the non-affirmative side. To which social institutions should be custodians you know, of morality? For um, the people who are literally supposed to be custodians yeah. of morality. Mm-hmm. For me, the church can uphold morality. It holds um, standards of morality. And it did that, that. I can even give church. you evidence. The church has done it. Mm-hmm. Christianity has done it. Islam has done it. Religion institutions have done it. Because I can testify about maybe 80% of our parents all went to religiously owned institutions. Mm-hmm. St. Anna, St. Bernard, St. John. Look at how their morality has turned out. They are the people with the best morality in this world. And we can all agree on this. Why are you using them as the standards? Mm-hmm. But then they learned at a Christian school. It's a religiously owned institution. And this is what the institution has produced. Mm-hmm. So you can clearly tell that the religions are there doing their job. They've instilled schools and the schools are successful with, mm-hmm. within instilling morality. Mm-hmm. So I, li- I literally can see why you're now blaming um, immorality on the religious institution. When at home, the parents are not there, which means if your mother and father are not there, you don't have your mother and father. Like right now, you're on a podcast, but then who is at home fathering your child? Mm-hmm. No one. Yeah. So then that leaves the child to go and wander and learn about morality in the different places, like the internet. Mm-hmm. You see, now the child, because the parents are not there, they don't restrict him, they don't tell him, do this, don't do this. He's now on the internet. Mm-hmm. The internet is the first thing he sees. He adapts to the internet. And again, this internet, Western worlds are there, yeah. cultural mixing is there, there's amalgamation when yeah. cultures are now mixing. Mm-hmm. So now if you like some certain type of, let's say you like the gangster aesthetic, yeah. you've seen it on the internet. Did your, Was your mother dead to, to, to say that this is bad or this is wrong for you? No, no. you just like, therefore you just then pursue, you then live within, you adopt that certain culture, you adopt the things that the internet has That's what you've seen every day. Yeah, that's what you've seen and no one was there to teach you because the parent is not there mm. within today's society. You can act as a testament. Look at Zimbabwe, we are suffering, right? Which means parents, you need to act 
24-7 to make it happen. And parents, everyone is working. Yeah. You can all testify. Mm. Leaving the children alone. So children have been I neglected. I think I agree to this point. Yeah. What's your take on that one, Tagura? Right. Um, you were saying, uh, I want to get the first point you were saying to, to highlight back a little bit. Uh, you said greediness is, is, is being human. It's natural. Mm-hmm. But when I, say, when I was asking you the question, I said, you're not greedy. But you are in a desperate way, in a desperate situation. You want to join a certain exactly. clan. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm closing this one for debate, but I just wanted to make sure that he gets that. It's not about greed. It's not about personal. It's about you want to join this because there's only pressure. Yeah. We're working with pressure. Yeah. That's what I was saying. Mm-hmm. Then uh, we come uh, to this point about uh, uh, having influence from the internet mm-hmm. or places elsewhere that religion is not partaking. <laughs> Look, when you are talking about um, religious institutions being to blame mm-hmm. here. I think in, in, instead of stating that uh, this is causing, that is causing right now, when I put a blame, there's supposed to be a solution, a mitigation. Mm. To say you blamed greediness, yeah. but greediness is solved by this, right? But we, like I said before, when you come with a different topic in motion, it says to, it says to make logical sense to me to answer. Because now I have to answer a, a question about internet. Mm. I'm not discussing about internet. Internet, yeah. Exactly. Anyways, uh, I wanted to, 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 to mention another point to blame about, uh, to blame the religion aspect. To say, have we since noticed that people have moved from uh, gospel spreading, evangelism, to gospel entrepreneurship? Mm. Gospreneurship. Prosperity. Yes. You know. Gospreneurship, right? Oh, it's called what? Gospreneurship. <laughs> right. <laughs> we are taking entrepreneurship and gospel. Okay. Right. So, people are moving from that. Uh-huh. In this case, I don't want to blame uh, the masses. Mm-hmm. We go back to the leaders, right? To say, uh, if you guys are doing this for your own prosperity, for your own success, mm. then how is this upholding the moral values which the religion is supposed to do? Because characters of religion is supposed to teach people. Exactly. It's not teaching people. Mm. I understand you're saying there are other factors that are influencing people to do this thing. But now my question is, let's pinpoint our, our argument on the fact that there is a religion. Mm. What is it doing? What is it not doing? Then... Uh, about uh, Christian institutions. <laughs> Let's be very practical and not generalize issues. Mm-hmm. Here in Zimbabwe, we have people who are having functions. Are they talking about drugs? They call people, come to this prophet, mm-hmm. get healed. Mm-hmm. Hey, what, what, the, the, the exorcism, crossover, Pentecost, mm-hmm. Eucharist, whatever, only to mention a few. Mm-hmm. But what are they doing? And also, if you want to judge that, um, here in Zimbabwe, how many people are getting exposure to those kind of functions? Mm. Those kind of functions cater people who have their cars or who can commute to that certain area. Yeah. We have people in, 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 in remote areas. Yes. They don't know that. They can't access them. And they're still under the legion, or under the indigenous religion. Yeah. <sighs> in that case, the indigenous religion itself is already violating the, the moral codes. Mm. Because, yes, we can talk about uh, the coming of westernization, right, uh, Christianity. To say, that's another point, to say that... Uh, Christianity is now the, the new world here. Yeah. But now, uh, there's this popular statement which says uh, the, the, the missionaries brought uh, a Bible mm-hmm. in the left hand, right? And a gun. In the right hand. In the right hand. In this, in this case, I don't want to take the gun to, uh, in an instance that it will pop out bullets, no. Yeah. But can't we see that the gun is here? Because now people are being indoctrinated. Mm-hmm. In this case, there's a vivid example. We did, yeah. we did have, wait, we did have mainline churches, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Which are operating within the system. Exactly. The top, mm-hmm. there was first one church, then we go to, then three. Mm-hmm. Of course, people have made peace that is three now. Yes. But now there are thousands. Of which that's a division. If it's one religion, then why is it no yeah. one Christianity? Because here we have Pentecostal that are next to this. Same line. Uh, you <laughs> know, same line. On that one. On right. that one. Before, you know, before we can criticize. <laughs> same line. The, the it's the same, it's same God. Yeah, same, same God. Same Bible. But you should know, before we criticize, like our Christianity having a lot of denomination, you should first start the religion within itself. Mm. In Christianity, we don't believe that you're going to have one universal church. It's not within our religion, ethics, and our rules. Mm. Right? So you should first start Christianity first before you criticize. If you read Revelations, yeah, the church of Macedonia, the church of Syria, that's God acknowledging that there will be a lot of churches and a lot of mm. um, different churches. It's not wrong to have your own church, and it's not wrong for you to have your own church. right? But now, he then verifies my point that religion is truly about peace. Mm. Because within all this, 
is you have seen that I can sit, you can sit next to an Anglican, you can sit next to a Zion, you can sit next to a postward, mm. but you've never seen them fight. Mm. They truly respect each other and say, you might be from this denomination and I might be from this, but my religion and my institution teaches me peace, right? That's how religion works. Yes, a lot of different churches cannot be appointed simply that that's how it is. That's what is in Christianity. But then again, my point is on morality. Yes, he comes in with the notion that the church is, you know, I don't blame you. He comes in saying that the church is supposed to um, write morality. It's supposed to rebuke people from doing bad stuff, yeah. right? But for me, I'm saying it's true. That's what the church is supposed to do. Yeah. But the main cause of this immorality and the decadence of morality within society mm -hmm. is the community where the people have failed each other. It is the parents. The parents are no more there for the child, leaving them to go and cater for different types of morality. Mm. We even have got globalization, ladies and gentlemen, whereby Australians, Americans, Zimbabweans, we can intermingle, thereby we can now adopt certain foreign cultures, even though they might hinder our morality as a community. This is what, these are the main causes of immorality within Zimbabwe. We all agree on that one. And then now we have the church. And it's true that the church might be preaching a gospel of prosperity. But should we blame the church? I doubt. But Look I want in, you to ask this. Uh, I want to ask you this. Yes. Um, if the religion is not to blame uh, for, for the, you know, uh, decadence of morality in societies, who is mm. to blame now? This is where now I come in and say religion is not to blame. The parents are to blame. The parents of today are to blame. They're not there for their children. They are not upholding our sons. They're not teaching their children at mm. all. Parents are very busy because they're in a tight economy. We then come to the community. Our community has changed its dynamic. You know, we've westernized. We no more have that hard mashona prosperity way, but we say every neighbor, we, we, we cater for each other. We, now, we, are, we are now even building jurors across our house saying, you can't see what I do, and you can't see what I do. You know, So the community has changed that dynamic effect, making a breeding ground for immorality. Mm -hmm. So the parents, the community, globalization. These are the three culprits to blame for our immorality. But then again with the church. And you obviously expected the church to correct these things and the church to, to, to give them a sense of morality and to um, abort the gender of morality. And I have to admit, the church has done just that. We're complaining about the internet. Yeah. That children are viewing wrong things on the internet, adopting wrong cultures. Mm -hmm. But is the church not making an effort? If you go on YouTube, won't you see maybe a sermon of revival or something you read, right? That's the church making an effort. It's also going on the internet so that it spreads morality. He also he makes a point of, we now have churches mm -hmm. that, are preaching, that are preaching the gospel of man. Yeah. Right? And it's happening. It's happening. I feel at me too, but they say, I'll give you this water, you go in bathing, you have money yes, under your bed. Right, it's yes. fully happening. But I would like to ask you a question. If I stand here, I go to a congregate of people, right? Most people in Zimbabwe are suffering, right? Yeah. I go in front of the congregate. It's me, and let's say it's him. I come in and say, I'm preaching the gospel of how to raise your child well, how to have morality, how to teach your wife well. And he comes in and preaches the gospel of money. You have money. And that's what the people in Zimbabwe are so desperate for. So I'm saying even if... The church, even if I wanted to go and preach morality, because the people want something that is more relevant to them, they'll obviously go to man. Yeah. We can't help it. And then he brings us the notion that he says, you then go and kuromba because you want to join a community in church. That's practical. I don't even know if he has ever went to church. But you know, in those gospels of like he said, um, what gospel of money and gospel of entrepreneurship, uh -huh. the church doesn't tell you to go and kuromba. They literally say, come in. In those type of corrupted churches, they say, come in. I put my hand over your head, I pray for you, I give you water, you go and bath and you have money. Oh, I see a prophet. They don't tell you to go and romba. On what charges? No, they, they don't. On we could even charges? have a, a sermon of one of those churches. They will never tell you to go and romba. They will just maybe lie and say that if you bath with this water or if you give you this anointing, you will be rich. So the church is not advocated for kuromba at all. Mm. It is truly advocated for money, but not getting the money in the wrong ways. The only thing you can do, if, if you follow this gospel of prosperity, uh -huh. there's only one thing you can get. Disappointment. It won't work. You may be given the money and it won't work. Sakura. Right. When you are saying that uh, they are not preaching about the gospel of Koromba, I never said they say actually go in on Koromba where you go now. That's not what I said. Because it, oh, it totally goes against the ideology of the, the, of the institution. Mm -hmm. I said desperate times go for desperate measures. It's practical. On August time, you know, last year we had things about what, 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 what. Right? <laughs> that one. People, people well, are doing I, I, it. I don't think it was, it was, it was real. Though. Exactly. But we are saying there they, they are just things happening. Practical yeah, things. Exactly. So we cannot dismiss that people are not doing it. Mm. People are doing it. But I said somehow, if, if someone does that, it means they are actually going against moral code. Yeah. Right. Then we talk about, uh, uh, he, he, he highlighted in, an instance whereby people will be preaching, he'll be preaching more of uh, uh, child, childhood grooming mm -hmm. lessons, and yeah. then I'll be preaching about money. 
Guys, people here in Zimbabwe, they want money. <laughs> we want people money here want money. Want. Want, want money. Want money. People here. Yeah. Wait, let me finish. I want money. People, yes, people <laughs> want money. People in Zimbabwe want money. We agree. Yeah, we agree. What they do now, in in in, in relation to that, all right, let's go away from... Um, from, from, from finance, let me give you another example of a desperate move. Mm-hmm. People are having extra money for affairs with church leaders. That's against ethical mm. rules. Yeah. Mm. That's against ethical exactly. rules. So when I talk about gospel ownership, I'm not Seeing saying that someone... Prophet in love with the present worship woman there. Right? You know, I feel like and then when I'm, saying, when, when, when I'm saying that people are doing desperate measures, I'm not talking about money only, as in you have to give in the paper. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about the acts that, are, that they're going to do. Right? And then for the parents, um, Kyle was saying that... Uh, Parents are to blame because they are not actually doing what they're supposed to do. They're not there for their kids. Right. Christianity. We have parents in Christianity. We have we also have people who are breaking moral codes who are Christians. Mm-hmm. Of Christian parents. Mm-hmm. How are we excusing them from that? Because right now uh we are saying this, he's saying it as if those parents are are, are not religious. Mm. Yes, there are people like that, but I'm saying what if there are those people who are in the Christian institution mm-hmm. but have children? Because we are not saying this uh, immorality is only going on in indigenous religion yeah. or in Islam yeah. only. But we also have um, Christians and the parents and the children who are doing that. Mm-hmm. And if we took a, take a look at it, uh, most of the people who are doing that, they are Christians, mm. to be honest. Because uh, in, in ATR, they have a system already yeah. that is set in IR. They have a system that is set. Mm-hmm. When you do this, yeah, I liked it. I liked it. That is very true. They are, ch- they are elders. Yeah. They, they tell you that this is your parent, exactly. ev- everyone, yeah. right? But then Christianity, people are not doing that. People go out. You see people getting into their cars, dressed nice. They are going to church. But this mother doesn't talk to that mother. Mm, in the same church. In the same church. And then the children, they are watching. How are they going to learn about uh, communalism and getting to know each other? So this that, is when again we come back. In conclude, yes, it is a church. It is a religious institution. Mm-hmm. But because I'm Christian, it doesn't make me perfect. Mm-hmm. I'm not perfect. I can't uphold morality at its finest premium because mm-hmm. I'm human. But I just practice Christianity, which means I'm even condemned to being a sinner. Mm-hmm. The Bible strictly highlights that you shall fall and everyone is fallen short of grace. Mm-hmm. Every fallen Christianity has fallen short of grace. Every fallen Christianity, yes, at some level, they've all practiced immorality because they're human. And what it is sinners, that's Christianity. But then now we are coming and say, these parents, right, these parents of ours, mm-hmm. they are not, they are going to church, right? And as they go to church, we go to, to church together, parent, mother, father, and child. Mm-hmm. You go into church, you sit. The pastor teaches you, parents, raise your child into the ways of the Lord so that when they grow up, they shall not depart from the teaching. <laughs> exactly. That's the gospel they are preaching. That's uh-huh. morality. Yeah. But mm-hmm. the pastor mm-hmm. cannot come to your house and say, I do this. Way. It's not the parents' job to instill it in their child. Mm, yes. The same way we, in Zimbabwe, but we have laws like don't steal. And then you have the police I to agree. instill that. Mm-hmm. So even if the church goes and preaches, do this, that premium immorality, a premium morality at its finest. But if the parents don't implement it, we are not going anywhere. They, these are the same children you will now catch decades later again in the mm-hmm. church doing what he was doing of saying, oh, I want money, then they go and kuromba. Right, exactly. right. The parents have Very not confirmed true. to the real um, ideological ideas of the religion mm. it is of. So we can't really say the institutions have failed, just the community and the people itself has failed. Mm. People turn a blind eye to certain ideologies. Like you said, mm-hmm. you go to church, teachings are actually brought out, people learn, right? Yeah. But the act of instilling behavior within your child has nothing to do with the pastor. Mm. Like he highlighted that the pastor has to follow. No, that's your thing as a parent, yeah. whether a religion or not. But now I'm saying we have people who are going to those churches and doing that. In the same church. Exactly. And it, because there's this kind of behavior, mm-hmm. immorality. Yeah. But then, can I, tell you, I did Christianity. When we're in Christianity, we say good to everyone is equal mm-hmm. within the system. Mm-hmm. right? The God, God loves everyone. Right. But then, when loves everyone, we're having discrimination, prejudice. Yeah. Right. To say we under you don't do that. That's my line of argument. I'm not saying that the parent uh, yeah, should be totally divorced from the church. I'm saying the parent now, uh, they go to church, they know the values. Mm-hmm. Every Christian, when you're talking about Christian, my guy, we are talking about the end times. Akunam Christian and Nama travel the sick of fun. They fear. <laughs> it's fear. It's fear. fear it's what? fear. The end times. Heaven and hell. <laughs> Am I lying? <laughs> Exactly. So when you're talking about the fear, 
of, of, of end times. <laughs> now, people are doing it for the sake of it in the church, but they, when they're out of the church, uh-huh. no one holds on to that. Yeah. Like, like I, I quoted something here. They say, uh, many religions teach that some people will go to hell after they die. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a pretty dark thing to believe. It's pretty harsh to say that someone deserves to suffer after all eternity because Christians live within the world of sin. He's not aware of that because he's saying things as if like he, people uh, have to start from zero. Already Christians live within the world of sin. So what are they going to do now to rectify the world of sin that they are living already? Yeah. They're not mitigating. I cannot de- deny the fact that there are also other influences. But now my point is, what is religion doing? Okay, fine. Uh, religion didn't do that. Religion didn't do that. But when religion is participating, what is it doing to cater for that? Mm, people okay. are not going out. Wait. People are not going out there to come on outreaches to say, ah, we have seen your, your, your child uh, behaving in this way. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, people are not doing that. They just say, you see the behavior. Even when they are not there. Right? Another vivid example. I'm talking about contemporary issues. Let's not reach out. Uh, like, I'm talking about contemporary issues. I'm talking about contemporary issues. Let's not reach out. Like, we have to discuss about the Zipa ground. Uh-huh. Methodist founder, my Methodist leader, mm-hmm. scandals, yeah. committed suicide, exomatal office. Mm. Can you not blame that on religion? Because I'm not a religion. Okay, okay, That's okay. religion. Yeah. So this is now when you come in. I love people who state what is happening right now. Mm. Particularly state it with enough information in the real context, not in the wrong context, right? Mm. So he comes in and says, I completely get what he's trying to say. He's saying, what is the church doing in the midst of this immorality? Is it doing enough or is it not doing enough? And the church is very much doing enough. But what can it do? It is simply an institution. It is not the law. It cannot force people to abide by it. It is not a religion whereby we will literally come with guns and say, do this. We can't. We can only simply tell you. But then it's now your decision as an individual to say, do I really want to confirm to this sort of morality or do I just want to do what I want to do? So that's the church. You know, we have retreats within these churches. I can give you an example like Hartford Ministries. They have retreats for these young youths whereby they say, let us go to this designated area and let us camp and we will teach you morality. Because they might know that the parents have beef. The parents yeah. are not getting along. The church is fully right. away because mm. it knows it's going to get a human and they also fall short. So that's the church. The church also has built schools that have installed in morality. This is what the church is doing. Look at it. The church has even dismissed its orthodox, its orthodoxy. Yeah. Because long time ago, we never heard that the church, like look at it, the church is now evolved with us. Now the church is now going on the internet too. So that it caters for those children without the mothers and fathers. This, are, this is what the church is doing. This is what the church is doing. But then it's just because the church is doing a lot. But then immorality is overshadowing the church. He then comes and says that people pray to God because they fear. You know, fear and faith. This is now we do you I, I disagree on that one. I because uh, profoundly disagree. How? how? Because in the Why? Bible, in the Bible we have got this. In the Bible, it's strictly highlighted, right? Fear God. But then because you may not be Christian and because but you may not fearing God and fearing end times, two different things. Okay. Fearing the end of times and fearing God, two different things. Yeah. So I need you to understand the dynamic. First of all, as Christians, we are taught to fear God. But then it's not a fear in the context whereby I'm saying that, ah, I can't do this because I'm going to die or God to kill me. Yeah. It's a fear of respect. The same way you fear your father, the same way, we, way you can come in front of your mother and it's remove your clothes. Fear family. your mother. Yeah, you have yeah. respect for your mother. That's the fear we get. In Christianity, we are taught that love God with all your heart and soul. It does not always say love him because you go to hell. It's mm. saying love God because of your heart, with all your heart and soul. Love him because he protects <laughs> you. Love him because he's the one shielding you from everything. That has to do with something in the spiritual realm. Mm. Again, after he says love God, he's then saying God condemns sin. Mm-hmm. Even though he condemns sin, he still loves you to the point that he gave him, you, you, you guys, his only son, yeah. right? Which means he loves us, but there's a rule and rules can be changed. If you do not conform to what God's ways are, you will not be with God. Mm. Therefore, you will be in hell and you should really blame it on the religion. So if you then are doing immorality and you tell yourself, I'll go to hell, you're 100% correct. Mm. You will. You will go. You know it yourself, <laughs> but then you just want to be delusional and say, oh, you're making us worship in fear. Right. You know, you know, you have that conscience. You right. already uh, know. Uh, uh, about, about you already no. know. About no. The same no. way when you still, you know that you're going to be arrested. You you I have a question. I have a question. Okay. Right. When you're talking about the concept of sin, right, can we say that uh, people, all right, can I ask you, can you actually be in a church and pray for nothing else than having eternal life, which is subjected to the Bible and having, uh, you know, all that? No. 
Exactly. Mm-hmm. What are you praying for? You are consistently told that there's going to be an end time. If you don't this, you're going to. So whether it's out of passion or out of or what. Life. Yes, people love God, but are we saying it's a willingness? Is, is it willing? Because if you love God, you're going to be, you know, blessed, rewarded. If you don't, you're going to be punished. So it leaves you with no choice. I'm not going to leave this hanging. <laughs> because I let me that. finish. Let me finish. Uh, I'm not no choice. I, it's no choice. Because you have to, if, whether you love out of compassion or you love out of no choice at all, you are just situationally loving. <laughs> the, the point is there is, is that actually if we're discussing that manner, we're actually saying that this religion is actually degrading rights. Mm. Because now you don't have a right to choose. In okay. this case, because the, you do not have the right to choose. Yeah. Christians are religious. I, I need to correct a point. Um, Karl Marx says uh, religion is the opium of, of the people, of, of the, the people, masses. Yeah, of, the mass, yeah. of the masses, right? And then there was this illustration to say, you cannot, Kanamur religion, you cannot come with a gun to, to force. Mm-hmm. The, uh, when, when Karl Marx described this opium, opium is a very strong, influential thing. Yeah. Religion is influential. Mm-hmm. Like, for example, Islam. There's jihad. People fight physical battles mm. for the sake of religion. Yeah. Conflict, violence, blood loss. Religion is not about compassion. Let's not limit. Mm. If we say it's about love, if we say about it's about what you want, uh-huh. you're lying because that's your own religion in the mind. You do not have to you situate know, religion into your own think, compass, uh, into your own in, into your own hands. Right. Religion is fitting everyone. So if you love, if you love God for, for the sake of loving him, that doesn't mean that the person sitting next to you in the church is doing for the same. Some people are doing it for the pain. Mm-hmm. Then, second thing, he also talked about uh, the aspect of sin, saying that God loves both righteous and yeah. sin. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I, I truly go against that notion. Not to say it's not true. Mm-hmm. Indeed, God, because I cannot refuse on his behalf. But now I'm saying it's, it's actually promoting immorality. Mm. Because we have people, uh, you guys cannot, cannot deny this. People there on social media joke to say, uh, if God, God, uh, there's this time where you see him in movies or maybe in actual life, or in the, even in the Bible, if, if, if you say, about, if you're about to die and you say, uh, Lord, forgive me, I am a sinner. Mm. And then, then you, you're, you're believed to be... To, to be purified, purified. Right. right now people will. are going to be sinning for that effect and we're talking about the, uh, a generation which is so <laughs> into following things yeah i'm not going to take that passion mm-hmm. is the reason for people to pray no people pray for some we have people who are praying for money yeah money we have people who are praying for the sake of having followers mm-hmm. in church you to be like full of people exactly yes, you can you, you can follow a church to say yeah this church is masses mm-hmm. then you take your things here and then you go it with it in the church mm-hmm. to operate within the church because you see church no, 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 business, no, no, so I mean, I'm refusing <laughs> we do not have to monopolize the fact that religion stands for passion <laughs> like or know, love I we- completely, you know I hear what he's saying yeah. that in some sense yes you might go and sin and then come back with that out of saying yeah. thank I you just, I'll just come back and be like yeah. thank sorry you. God um, I won't do this again mm-hmm. but thank then you. he also mentions the point where religion is like it instills fear within people so you can't really live because you know that if you believe then you go to hell yeah. he then gives us an example of Islam and says that in Islam if jihad is to that force people into the religion. Mm. One thing I love is when I never said force people into religion. So what do jihad jihad is do? Jihad is misinterpreted because there's uh, three types of jihad: personal, verbal, right, and the whole war. So when you're talking about jihad, you need to be very sensitive when you're talking about those facts. Because in this case, I'm talking about uh, uh, I'm talking about violent jihad, the whole war, in okay. which when one who is a non-Muslim confronts um, a, a, a Muslim, no, a Muslim, a Muslim, they have to defend themselves. Of which within their religious obligations, they're supposed to defend, whether it's fighting or not. Yeah. But as long as you go against the word of Allah, mm. right? Okay. Then you have to fight for them. Oh, yeah, That's violence. That. What are we saying here? We go for that. So yes, within the Quran, it might say that you have to fight and you have to defend. Which is a religion. Allah's perspective. Yeah, it's religion. It's it is religion. religion. Yeah, that you have to defend your prophet and <laughs> yeah. you have to do this. Okay, it it's fights. religion. Okay, it was allowed but you to fight. It's to fight immorality. <laughs> fight immorality. Immorality. But we must agree upon one thing. Yeah. As much as yes, I'm a Muslim, my um the Quran discreetly tells me that if anyone right comes and disagrees my prophet, mm-hmm. I shall fight for my prophet. Yeah. Right. Again, we should know Islam is a religion. It has got, it's one of the best religions when it comes to instilling morality. Mm-hmm. I mean, like you can see from the way they dress to the way they do their mm-hmm. things. But you should read, they do not attack you because you do not conform to what their God has mm. said. They only attack when you pose a threat to them. When you with your own immor- in, in, in immorality come in and say, you know what, you're going to take over your place. They have that go ahead to say, defend yourself. Uh-huh. And that's very practical. Even in the constitution you have 
um, self defense. Defend yourself? Yes, we cannot live in a religion now, whereby. Is, is, okay, what are the means of defending yourself? So, by defending ourselves, uh-huh. in the case that we have, let's say, I read the Bible, right? Yeah. You know, the founder, Mohammed, he was a man who was very good when it came to, when it came to defending his own people. So, he, he partook in a lot of wars generally to defend his religion, right? And I don't see anything wrong with that because you want to defend life, you want to defend yourself. We don't. You don't see anything wrong with violence. So if no, okay, that, that, that's perform, a good question. Yes, no, you don't see anything wrong with violence. Is bad. Violence is bad. Immorality. Actually, but do you <laughs> yeah, want me to stand in front of a person holding a gun and then I just stand like this and be like, kill me? It doesn't work that way. Uh-huh. Therefore, if Islam says if anyone poses a threat, wait, the person has said, I want to kill you all. Mm. I want to discriminate. I want to 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 to. But but, but a question to you, uh, Atagura. Yes. yes. What did Moses do? To, to Pharaoh. Right. Would you mm. say it was not... Let me answer you immorality. a very good question. Very you can say that I won't let, fight for let myself. Me, because let, me immoral, let me answer. Let me answer. Let me answer. Thank you very much because this marks the end of it. Yeah. Your question. Mm-hmm. You say, did Moses... What did Moses do? Is it moral? It's not moral. I never say Christianity is right. I never say Islam is right. Mm-hmm. It's, not, it's not moral. That's why I'm blaming religion. It's not moral. But then morality is... Moses is from so the first... Morality says... It's not okay mm-hmm. to post a threat to someone. It's not okay mm-hmm. to want to kill someone, right? That's morality. But then logic also then says, even though I instill morality in me, even though I have morality in me, even though I know that I should not kill anyone, I should not murder. So but if a person comes to me as a In other threat, words, you're saying in, 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 in religion, there are We some, have logic. It's okay. logical to defend yourself. Some instance we have to use logic. Uh, logic. Yes. Then some instance we have to use morality. Morality. Because I'm not going... So we are now flip flopping. It's like flip flopping. They go ahead. Which, which religion? Morality which religion is this? And it's not consistent. Sanity. You know when I said... Um, Christianity. Is which, it, which religion is this? Is it Christianity or specify? I was specifying when you gave us the jihad. Re, yeah, um, yeah. Example. So which, I'm which just saying Islam. morality, right? Moral as much as one morality, it goes hand in hand with logic because morality is made through logic. When I say that, don't it's simply logic because it's bad. If I say that, don't kill. It's still, it's logic. It's bad. <laughs> so when you now come to me and say that you want to stab me, uh-huh. as much as I have morality, I'm also a human being. I have logic. Am I just going to stand there and let you stab me like that? No. Okay. In conclusion. Uh, let me uh, start uh, at Akura. Uh, what's your parting remarks on this one? Right. Uh, following on the last point he just said, he's saying that uh, you do not have to stand. You have to defend yourself. Mm. Right. So I never said uh, whether it's, if, if they're doing it in Christianity is right and if they're doing it in Islam is right. The fact that you are doing something because if we took if we take the, 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 the Christian point of view, the Decalogue, yeah. do not kill, do not what. Now, commenting on the, on the jihad, you are murdering each other. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's for a disparate move. You're doing it for the sake of protection or whatsoever, or protecting your ideologies, fanaticism. But still, there's an element of immorality, mm-hmm. which is being based on religion. Why is this happening? Because there are two religions that are, that are, that, that are fighting. Fighting, yeah. That's I never say it, Islam. Yeah, yeah I, never, I never justify to say that it's Christianity doing this and it's Islam doing that. Mm-hmm. Whether it's Christian, the fact that there's Christianity and Islam is totally division. Mm-hmm. To, to start with, yeah. before we go down to say the prophets and whatnot and whatnot, the fact that there is Christianity, Islam, Judaism, all that, that's division. Because uh, uh, religion does not refer to one, you know, d- sort of... Is it even, yeah, even, yeah. even, religion, even, religion, even, even yeah. in my it definition. Teaches, it teaches very good standards of morality. It says do not kill, do not do this, people don't still do killing. that. That's religion. <laughs> people still killing. Wait, yes, yes. people still kill, right? People still. That's religion. But in this context, you must understand that if someone, right, let's say I'm in an Islamic country and the people want to kill me maybe because I, I go against their beliefs so or I've threatened them in some way or form, it is simply logical. For me, it's not, we are not even adding religion. Mm-hmm. As a human being, it is simply logical that if someone comes, it's either I run or I attack if I have no option. That's logic. <laughs> so we cannot say, ah, you have killed and because you're a Christian, mm. illogic, Christianity. Immorality. It's not that. That's just something that has to do with the individual himself with I think, logic. So, I think it's to be to be continued. This one. I have yeah. a closing remark. Okay. Right. Uh, there's a popular saying that uh, that says um, there's the saying about religion. I think it just cross cross all religion, but mainly indigenous religion. To say you do not need a god or a person to come in front of you and tell you logic. For example, the existence of God. Mm-hmm. You know, we have Africans here who have never seen the Bible. Yeah. They in remote areas. They don't know the Bible. They don't know the exposure of other religions. Yeah. But there is God. They know there is God. Mm-hmm. It's an inbox instance. So some logical reasoning that he is saying, they do not have to be necessarily from someone. Mm-hmm. Right? But we are saying now, because they are logical, uh, the inbound instincts, which are now being at contradictory poses mm-hmm. with religion, mm-hmm. we are having immoral behaviors. 
So I'm just going to there. round up the <laughs> yeah. debate. So as we're you know, debating, I have pointed out the main causes of where the similarity is coming from. Mm-hmm. We have all concluded um, uh, um, globalization, yeah. yes. parents. Yes. And not only that, I also gave you instances when the church has tried its best to stop this immolarity. Mm. But then because, to stop this immolarity, but then the church has given its effort. But now because the immolarity is very big and it's just in a religious institution, right. it can only do as much as it can. It, yeah. it has its limits as an institution. Yeah. So now, if the church, it has done, it has reached its maximum peak, it cannot do other than that, except for violence. That's the only way now exactly. you can now make everyone conform. So it now leaves the main culprit of this immolarity to the individuals themselves. You then choose yourself to say, do I want to be immoral or moral human moral, being? Do yeah, I want to conform yeah. to the church or do I want to conform to my exactly. own, to my own exactly. um, reli- as a, my, my, my own desires as a human? Yes. But then you can see that the church is doing everything. everything it can, yeah. it has done its part, it has played this role, but because mm. you're human, you're very stubborn and your heart is like... Um, what, what do you call that fruit? I'm not sure. Matowe. Mm-hmm. You have decided to live your own lifestyle. So <laughs> yes. we can blame the church. Okay. Yeah. The church is done, but immorality is just too gigantic for the church. Mm. Okay, so we are both agreeing. Uh, let, let, me, let me make mm. this clear. We are both agreeing that there is some part that religion is playing part in oh, influencing. Okay, so then you, there are other factors that are coming in, just like you have highlighted. So when he says that religion is playing a part, right? I can't say religion because... We have never said that in the Bible. It doesn't say that Christians pray for money. You should say certain types of religious institution, mm-hmm. not all of them. So we must conclude are you just certain, certain types, and we must also conclude numbers, right? This might be just be small organizations, and whereby a pastor is a worldly pastor mm-hmm. is on desires. So are we saying that inflict his own desires within his institution? Are we it's saying that churches are not contributing? What are we saying that churches and religious institutions are, are totally not contributing? Religion is religious institution, some a bit of yeah, them. so, so it, there yeah. is contribution. It, it is, there is yeah. that's yeah. my question. Some, wait, if you say the, some, then some there is religion institutions yeah. are contributing. Thank you very of much. The corrupted <laughs> individual, yeah. so you cannot blame the institution. Some the corrupt individual. Uh-huh. If, like today, the Pope has said, the Pope said, You're not allowed to bless same sex mm-hmm. couples, yeah, right. And the Catholic Church is denouncing it here in Africa and Nigerians, but they're saying, No, yeah. right. that's the institution it has spoken. It's the institution is the people. The mm. Catholic, the, the, the Catholics are the Catholic Church. They are the institution, not the Pope. So you have seen how it is played. The institution of Roman Catholic is denounced. It is condemned. It is yeah. yeah. saying we shall not do so. But if the Pope says bless them, and then you come and say, but then Catholics are they are contributing. <laughs> it's the Pope. It's not the Church. He's just the Pope. The Pope is the leader of the Church. They follow him. The Pope is the leader of the Church. He's the leader. The Pope is the leader of the Church. As is the leader, he has given an order. Yeah. The institution, the people, you've denounced it. Denounced it. Not all. Not all. That's when we some say some. Yeah. Not all. So, so if, if we agree that he's saying some and I say some, mm-hmm. then this marks the end of the discussion. <laughs> if it's if it's some, some. If the church is now yes. 50-50, then we do not have an institution. Uh, we do have an institution. They should just as well just break up the same way the Catholics and the Anglicans. Which is an immoral yes. behavior. Which is an immoral behavior. <laughs> like, I, like I said, I think it's <laughs> to be continued this one. Because, oh, yo, issues to do with religion. I know it can go on and on and on. So thank you so much, Takura, uh, for coming. Karikega. Right. And my brother here, Kyle. Thank you. Um, say name. Masango. Masango, Kyle Masango, yes. Uh, from uh, Northwest. Northwest and BNP. BNP. Representing BNP, Sakura, mm-hmm. representing Northwest is uh, uh, my brother, um, Kyle. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you so much, guys, for watching. My name is DJ Ola 7 Owen. We're Kwama Don, the only number one podcast show in the land, the Ola 7 Podcast Show. I hear you, you get to learn, you get to learn, you get to uh, know new stuff, you know, to discover new stuff. I mean, so right. yeah, it's a show not to miss this one. Last week we had uh, Safiya Baba on this show. She Ooh. was good, she was good. You watched this one? Yeah, I did. Ooh. She was good. Gega, gega. Sounds like a cartoon. <laughs> Someone good. said, Ola, I'm sure when I got plug on my gates, it was something like that. And and she was flowing. Yeah, she was flowing. Yeah, she was flowing. So there's Mr. Bacon and there's Safiya. So they're both coming back on the show next week. Uh-huh. It's gonna be fire that one because these guys, I think they match the you know, Makarjas are one that go no match us Okay, so we are going to have them on this show, and, and I'm sure it will be like this. <laughs> this was interesting. Kyle. This was very, interesting. very interesting, yeah, very productive it's, competition. Exactly, great. After this, then he goes back to church. After what you see, I am uh-huh. going back to church. That's my religion. Exactly. I have to kneel down. Exactly. But facts are facts. Facts are facts. Say, facts That's are why I say, down. leave your faith outside. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I thank you so much, guys. Don't forget to follow us on our number one uh, Facebook page. That's DJ Ola Seven, and also subscribe to our YouTube channel at DJ Ola Seven. Big again. 
again next week, same time. Thank you. Bye bye. You haven't tasted rice until you taste Auntie Flo's Kilombero rice. It brings out the flavor and taste in every meal. It's priced right as well. $4 for 2 kgs, $10 for 5 kgs and $100 for 50 kgs. Available at Eastgate Market Shopping Center in Harare and Fidelity Life Center in Bulawayo. Or simply WhatsApp us on the numbers on screen now. Auntie Flo's Kilombero rice. Delicious. Tasty, mouth-watering. From as little as $20, your Christmas and New Year's could be filled with entertainment. We provide free-to-air decoders, smart TVs with built-in satellite receivers, tech support for all our products second to none. Find us in Harare, Mutare and Mashingo. For more information, WhatsApp us on the numbers appearing on screen now. Kesson Electronics. Grab yours today.